Hello. Hey, hey, June Bad, also known as Nana. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hope you all are having a good Saturday so far. Just waiting for my guest to join and then we'll be good to go. It's day show in the house. Hi, <laughs> Hi. I hope it's not too dark. Can you see? Oh, I can see you. Um, I can see you and I can hear you. I can hear you. So I hope everyone else can hear you as well. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Today is Saturday in Luton. It's Saturday here in Canada as well. And I'm sure it's Saturday to Nigeria. Ah, how's it going? It's not bad. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Cool. But yeah. So awesome! Yeah. Super, super excited. Woo! So, welcome everyone to I Rise Conversations with Joan. And as usual, this is just honest, open conversations based on my book, I Rise. So, if you haven't bought the book, make sure you get the book. And um, you know, the goal is really just to talk about issues that concern each and every one of us, issues of life, and share some of the challenges that we might have had. And I have guests who probably shared exactly the same challenges and can help us share some tips, you know, so we can start to dig our way out of the rut. 2020 was difficult for everyone. And 2020 was difficult for my weight as well. Um, weight loss is something that's very dear to my heart, to my waistline as well. I've struggled for over 20 years, maybe even 30 now. Um, so this is very, very key for me as a person. And I'm sure a lot of you also have struggled with weight, weight loss, weight gain, or you're just stuck and not able to lose any more or you have some challenges, some image issues because of the way you look. So anyway, uh, we're going to be talking a bit more about weight loss, you know, what, wherever you are in your journey, because it is a journey, never ends. Uh, we're going to be sharing some of the experiences that we both had. Um, and then we'll give you some insight into some of the things that the show has tried and I've tried as well and seems to be working. So let's dive right into it. So the show, well, I like to call her the show, you know, um, <laughs> just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay. Hi, I'm super stoked, super excited. I think this must be my like first proper IG live. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so Deshara, I live in Lagos, I live in Nigeria. I am in my 40s. I work in financial services. I'm interested in all things health, wealth, well being. Um, living my best life. Yes. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to 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 be here. I'm happy to discuss your book, which I thought was amazing. Thank you. Uh, through, um, navigating weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> so and I feel like a bit of a fraud, I must say, because I've not even been at it um, for so for for so for as long as you shall. Don't let me say for so long, because it's long, but not as long. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Mine feels like a yeah. whole lifetime, yeah. Okay. So mm. just, you know, talking about weightless journey, you know, what's, what's been your story? How's it been for you? What are the highs, the lows, you know, the challenges, the things you've tried, what has worked, what hasn't worked? Okay, so the first thing I'll say, right, in this weightless journey, and even in, in thinking about this today is, for the longest time, I was the same size. So maybe from 18, I'll say from like maybe 18 to 25, I was a size 8, a UK size 8. I've always had hips, right? And then from 25 to about 30, so to about 30, I then moved to a proper 10. 
right? And then I was now there for another couple of years. So I was there for like 25 to 35, right? I didn't, I didn't struggle too much. Or oh, 33. I think 33 is more, more uh, honest. I didn't struggle too much. So if I did anything, it was just, oh, this person is doing this. So I wanted to fit into a dress. Mm-hmm. So for that long, so imagine being a certain size for over 15 years and then one day, yeah, not that size again. It took, me, it took me a couple of it took me a couple of years so to wrap my head around the joint. I can't even lie. Because I'll be buying these size 10 clothes, but they're not really thick. Some some fit and some don't. Most mm. don't. And then I started buying tw- size 12 bottoms. I'm like, yeah, it's just because I don't want it to be snug on my hips, but uh-huh. I know I know better. Yeah. Um so yeah, so 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 that so that really is where it started from when I had to start buying size twelve. And I know for some people who would like size twelve, fully I could do a size twelve, right? But everybody's mm-hmm. journey is different and it's the same it's the same place you're in, whether you're I think whether you're a size twelve or you're a size twenty, it's the same it's the same space, it's the same sort of headspace. Basically you're mm-hmm. not the same terms of your headspace is the same because you want your clothes to look a certain way you want to go into a store and and pick up uh and 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 pick up the size you think you are and be that right and be that i remember i went to the store even today and the chick was like and i thought oh this is really fitted and i said to her that and it's a default that i will never buy large by default never in my life so anyway, so yeah, so so we start there, and then so that's where basically where it started. When I now started struggling, my clothes, my small clothes were not fitting me as well. Mm. I was, I just felt every time my clothes were tight. So I think the first thing I started, and I started out with you, Jude. I can never forget was when we did that um, maple syrup diet. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we bought them. We can remember we also bought um, waist trainers. Oh yeah. I don't know if more. I was, was it me and you or me and our mutual friend? I oh, I know. I bought, I bought tons of waist trainers. <laughs> I think you, you know. I think maybe you even brought it for us. Maybe you came back from a trip and bought the. I can't even remember. Anyways, maple syrup diet. And day one, day two, day three, I had this sharp pain in my head. I would never call it a headache. <laughs> a sharp pain, but that was <laughs> in my head. And I just thought, ah, okay, well, there has to be, I can't continue with this. So I fell off. Then I think I started exercising and just trying to eat more healthy. I started going to boot camps. Um, oh, we went to a few. <laughs> yeah, but you start eating brown rice, drinking green tea. You know, um, yeah, so I mean, those are the early, early days. Now, what I think about is that I just laugh because if I had known then that this is the struggle, would and it was a case of let me just is a I'm just gonna do this and get back. But as the years, of course, as you grow older, for most people, your metabolism slows down. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, it, it's been a journey, right? It's been a journey, and then at some point, I think I just thought I'll go to the boot camp. So, okay, yeah, so the boot camp worked. I changed my diet. So it was, I think it was really the first time I really changed my diet and I started eating um, healthier. So I started eating brown rice, um, drinking green tea, you know, making stir fries, smoothies. Oh, my God. I literally can't drink a smoothie anymore. I have to even confess. Like, when I think about it, because I drank so much or so <laughs> a lot of yeah. when I think I'm taking a smoothie now. I remember that grainy feeling in my throat, and I think no. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so smoothies, and it did work, right? And then I started a new job, and then the stress of that, so I couldn't work out as much. And then, the, I mean, at some, so I'm, I, I, and then the last time, so I remember in like 2012, I weighed, I probably was, and I laugh now when I say this, I, I weighed like 69 kg, and I thought, oh my God. Please remember, I know it's not a, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal. It's the mindset for everybody is the same. Whether you weigh 108, because I'm sure you can resonate with what I'm saying. Uh-huh. But and because I'm just putting figures to it. So I, I weighed 60, 69 and I thought, geez, no, never. So I managed to just crawl back to like 65, 64, 65, um, you know? And then I was there, so I, I started a, a new, so I, I was there, I started a new job. 
Um, and so for like a year, I thought I was eating healthy, right? Oh, I, I, I won't eat this. I would just I eat once a day, forgetting that if somebody has chinchin, I'm eating it. If somebody has... <laughs> Oh gosh. So by the time by when I paid attention was 2015. Mm. Uh I'm, I'm sure I was I was probably was close. I was probably like 73 kg. Then so then I went on a detox and then I went on another diet just portion controls. I bought these little bowls um uh, so that I could put my brown <laughs> rice. I could oh, yeah. uh, put my stir fry couscous. Um yeah, so so yeah, so it was then I'll do like a smoothie. Mm -hmm. I'll buy sorry, like a juice, a juice fast, you know. Um, I'll do all those things, and, and you know they work in the short term, right? So they work. I'll lose a bit of weight. Everybody be like, "Oh, you've lost weight." Mm -hmm. I'll put away. Let's not forget back. those that will tell you, "Oh no, you've lost enough. You're good the way you are." Oh yeah, so I exactly. <laughs> why, 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 like, I don't understand. And, and the annoying ones. And those ones are even okay. The annoying ones are you've added. <laughs> oh, yeah. After, after, <laughs> hey, how are you? Ah, you look like you've added weight. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused at this statement. Do you think I do not have a or my clothes don't tell me? Um, well, someone so, yeah. just commented that maybe your clothes just shrunk in the washing machine. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I can't even see it. We wish. <laughs> I wish. I, I honestly wish that was it. You know, mm. um, that's that would be would be great. Um. So, so yeah. So then, circle. So, 2015. So yeah. So I lost a bit of weight. Then I, I so I, I stopped work. I took a career break in early 2016. Gosh, what was I? I, I don't think I was even doing. I wasn't doing much. Okay, I think I was. I started going to the gym in 2015. So I started working out, going to the gym, continued. Then I stopped. Yeah. And then I now, so by the end of, gosh, I can't remember again. So I think it's like 2017. I was now thinking, oh, no, I can't continue like this. My clothes didn't fit. I came across, anyway, I was looking for, I can't remember what period of time, but I was looking for something more sustainable. I was looking for something where I could eat certain things and then, by, I don't know, by some stroke of luxury, I came across this keto diet where they said you could have bacon for breakfast. I said, what? <laughs> on that chain, Sign that me chain. up. <laughs> bacon for breakfast? Come on. Sausages? <laughs> it, was, it was protein only. Uh, you know, it's a really restrictive diet. And, 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 and in all fairness, right, keto does work, but I think because there are so many rules and restrictions. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it can be a bit hard. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit hard. I mean, I mean you know, so I'm drinking coffee and I'm blending coconut oil, butter. <laughs> the bulletproof <laughs> coffee. <laughs> bulletproof, oh, that bulletproof coffee. It, 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 it took a while, but I like Nasty. That, <laughs> I, I, I prefer, I'm not even sure which I prefer. Whether it's, I think I prefer the one with butter more. Okay, than the I think one yeah, the one with butter, butter is better. Yeah, the one with butter was best, was definitely better. And I'm a coffee person, so that's fine. So I loved it. I was trying to get myself off um, milk. So it's funny. So from that journey, so now I drink black coffee. I can't put anything in my coffee, right? I'm that person. I went from creamers and all sorts to black coffee. So it was mm -hmm. good. But one thing that always I used to that I struggled with, with on keto was the fact that A, you couldn't really exercise and I like going to the gym. I realized I like to exercise. And two, how okay, can you be Nigerian and not eat jollof rice? How? <laughs> it's not jollof rice in heaven, no. You gotta There's eat none. it on this so planet. Should I have eaten that jollof? Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. So I don't know Sorry, so I just thought, you know, I just thought to myself, and I, and I, and I, and, I, and when people always bash keto, or when I say to people, oh, they be like, so I lost weight, you know, so and and so this was like 2016, 2017, and then people were like, oh, what? Oh, I'm doing keto. Oh, that, and everybody's telling me what you can't or can't do on keto. I'm like, no, I've adapted it to my life. So that is where my journey. So that's where uh -huh. I, I, I didn't just follow it because my body is different from yours. 
I know the things. I remember my friend, mm -hmm. I still had that conversation with her today. She said that man, she can't cut her carbs in her life. That she knows because we, after like two or three or four days without carbs, she's like a beast. Like you can't even yep. talk to her. <laughs> so she can't as hell. So she was always for <laughs> break carbs. And, I took, and I've always I remember then I was saying no you can't do this, you can't do that. So yeah, so what I did was so I, I mean, and I keep telling you, for the last four or five years, I don't have rice in my house. I don't really have carbohydrates in my house. Mm. But if I go out, and that works for me. Mm. And that works for me. So from keto, then I started doing more research and just following different people. And social media helps you with that. You just follow more people and then see the different, what the different options are and how to even adapt. Because I think... Mm -hmm. It's no longer a diet, it's a lifestyle because you can't keep yo yoing and going back and forth. So I just thought to mm -hmm. myself, okay, what is the lifestyle? So how do I change this? Um, so my lifestyle then was, you know what, I will do keto at home to the best of my suit as, as I want it and eat whatever I want and eat Nigerian food or whatever it was, uh, uh, mm -hmm. carbohydrates, sorry, socially. So I did mm -hmm. that. Um, so I, I did that and, and that worked. And then at 2018, 2019, I was in a really bad place. I put on so much weight, well, so much for me. I was probably pushing 80 kg at some point. My clothes didn't fit. In fact, somebody, my friend was cleaning out her wardrobe and she had like new clothes and she was like a size 16. Those clothes, they fit me. So I can't tell anybody. <laughs> you understand? Those clothes, what, those clothes, when I wear them, they were my size. And so she was like, UK 14, 16. Yeah. <laughs> my size so i had those clothes so there was always that illusion mm. of you know you are okay um yeah. and then um i and then i decided in 2017 you know just to start going to the gym again so i started going to the gym and then i then real i think it was even both of us that were talking because we we're just talking about different things and how to to to, to manage and how to and how to make this sustainable because you know yeah yeah my goal for this year i have to lose weight my goal for that year i have to lose weight you lose some weight you go back you lose some weight mm -hmm. I, I, I want to you know what if this by the end of this 2019 if i'm not lost it i'm going to do plastic surgery because i'm tired i'm tired of this you ness and every you know everybody can you can say to that oh i'm okay as people say you are okay why do you need to yeah, okay but, mm -hmm. i it's for me it's all mental right it's, it's all mental mm -hmm. so yeah so um came across so i used to follow some lady on on um on instagram and she had started this omad one meal a day okay we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get to omad and i okay. in, a, okay. in, a, in a minute so yeah so that's okay. basically what so working out and just trying to eat clean okay. um has, has literally yeah it's where it's where so it's where okay. i am at okay so your, your journey is probably maybe like 10% of my journey. Um, I'm usually known as Definitely. the queen, queen of diets because I've done it all. You know, starting all the way back when from the Atkins diet, which was then kind of modified to become the keto diet, um, the Mediterranean diet, the rice diet, believe it or not, rice diet, you only eat rice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wow. Um, you, you name it, to the maple syrup where we just starved ourselves to death. Um, I did all the diets. I bought all the gadgets. I even had like, there's a toe ring. So you wear this magnetic toe ring and it's supposed to make you not lose weight and make you not gain weight. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Did not work. You know, the waist trainers, the patches, the teas. Are you joking? All manner of teas, all manner three of ballerina. swimming pills, three ballerine, like just so many teas out there. So many coffees for weight loss. I did them all. And the truth is, just like you said, it's not that they don't work. They work in the short term, but is it really sustainable? A lot of it really requires you to starve yourself. Like you really have to be doing under um, 500 uh, calories a, a day. And it's so, so restrictive. And so, you know, I suffer. I suffered. I struggled with my weight. Like people comment on my weight all the time. It's like, I, I felt bound by my weight. I felt like people were judging me because of my weight. And I'll get to people being judged about the way they, their physical appearance. And we can delude ourselves and say, oh, it doesn't matter. Everyone is different. But guess what? Humanity, we're not fair. We're not nice people. We judge people by the way they look. We look at someone who's 300 pounds or 300 kg and in, instantly you just think this person must be an irresponsible person. Or this person has got to be lazy. Or this person is a slob. 
So even though weight loss is never going to make you happy, so if you tie your happiness to that, you're going to be disappointed because I went from my heaviest, which is about 130 kg, to when I did my full starvation diet, I came down to about 80 something. Yes, I looked better in my clothes. Yes, I felt a bit better about my body, but it really did not bring me happiness. And so I moved on from thinking that weight loss was going to make me happy. And it was now like, okay, so how can I look best in clothes? How can I feel comfortable just walking into any store and buying whatever I wanted to, to buy? I already had the challenge because I'm pretty tall. So most clothes, you know, the arms are either too short. I don't want to have to deal with the sizes as well. I don't want to go to a regular store and not be able to find something that I like. So my journey has been very, very painful. Um, if I was to say the most painful experience was something called body rolling. <laughs> so it's where they put you on the table and seriously, literally with a rolling pin, they roll the fat on your body. That is the most excruciating thing I've ever been through in my life. But the lady who was doing it back then, and there's a couple of us who went to that, those sessions, and she would roll your body, and she'd be like, yeah, and you're like screaming, you're in so much pain. And she's like, don't worry, you're going to lose the weight. Uh, no. <laughs> I didn't even understand the science behind it, because I'm like, okay, I'm in so much pain. She's like, no, we're, we're breaking down the fat, and now it's going to melt. And Oh, my God. It was so excruciating. But that was the extent I was willing to go, just to lose this weight. Fast forward, what now? It's been over 20 years. Up and down. Yo-yo. Left, right, center. It just takes one life instance and I'm back to boom. I'm back to the size 16, size 18, you know. And I know I, I, you know, it wasn't about happiness. I just didn't feel comfortable in my skin. I didn't feel like I, I could shop wherever I wanted to shop. I hate being restrictive about what I was going to wear. And so like you, I also tried all the different diets and keto kind of seemed to be the most, yeah, it kind of worked. But again, you know, this whole, oh, someone says plus steaming. Yes, exactly. So they roll you and then you go through the steaming. Very painful stuff. Sorry, George, so I, I, remember, I remember, I remember, I remember when we were in New York and somebody told us about boiling, boiling lemons. I think that was my oh, most yeah. painful. <sighs> so we, we've, remember, tried, we've tried it all. There's so much, there's so much yeah. out there. And I, I, I think the key is that, first of all, it's not a one size fits all. Like everything will not fit everybody. You have to choose what really fits your lifestyle. Um, but there's some basic misconceptions about weight loss. Like people think, oh, it's just something you do for one month and boom, I'm there. I'm good. No, no, no. This is a lifetime journey. And that's why when people say it's a lifestyle, that's what it is. And you have to find a lifestyle that really, really works for you. After years of, I've also not had rice in my house for years. I haven't eaten rice in a long, okay, well, I did have rice in Nigeria when I went in December. But prior to that, I haven't had rice in so long. I haven't eaten yam. I had so much yam in December. But it was all these restrictions. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. And that's what really put me off keto. And I also found that after a while on keto, you just stop losing weight. So now I'm punishing myself by not eating the foods that I really love, which is cake and chocolate. But now I'm not even losing any more weight. So I found that keto wasn't even sustainable for me as a long-term lifestyle. For some people, it's great. It works. Um, but even people do keto the wrong way because they think it's unlimited amount of protein. So they just eat meat. They're like, I'm going to have suya for breakfast. I'm going to have pepper soup for lunch. I'm going to have like five cold catfish for dinner. Well, that's not real keto. Keto is a little bit more restrictive than that. So this journey has gone on for years um, and I've dragged all my friends. I've dragged you, you know, have other friends that I keep dragging everything I'm trying. I'm like, come, oh, let's try this because the struggle has been real. The struggle has been on for so long. So I'm happy that we finally came to a place. I think maybe now it's almost two years where we discovered, you know, OMAD and I, which you're going to be talking about. Oh yeah. So yeah, for breakfast, done it all. <laughs> so yeah. So tell us more about, you know, OMAD and the IF lifestyle. Okay, so the IF, which is intermittent fasting, so I, I got on that first. Um, like I said, so I had met this lady on, I found her on Facebook or, or Instagram, I can't remember which of them. And she was like, she started off with keto. Um, but as, 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 and the reason why I liked her was because she evolved and was always learning and looking to do more. And then she now started, she started talking about intermittent fasting and how she doesn't have breakfast and how we don't need, we really don't need as much food as we think to survive. So I thought, okay, let's see. So I joined her program and it was a, okay, we started with the 16, 18. So that's, so what intermittent 16, fasting, eight. Mm -hmm. 16, 8, sorry. What intermittent fasting is, is that you eat for a certain, you eat within a certain window. 
So you can eat within an eight hour window um, and then you fast for 16 hours. And what that, what, what, um, what that does is it helps your body rest and, and it helps you digest your food um, fully and also allows your, your body to rest, your organs to rest. So that way you are then burning. So your, organ, your, your digestive system isn't continually working and, and stressed. So by the time your food has been digested, then your body now looks for sources of energies from different places and then it takes, starts to pull from the fat and starts to burn that fat as energy. And I thought that was very interesting. Like, okay, fast. We're always fasting in church now. Church fast. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes this is there. Yeah. Mean, we six to six now. And when you notice that, but the truth is, if you liken it, remember we say, I know that's starvation. It's not. When you're fasting in church, it is the same principle. It's the same thing because you're not eating from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oh, yeah, that's 12 hours. The way people always lose weight during their church fasting, always. I don't know anybody that has done those. Fasts. So, so it's the same principle because your body is in a state of your body can do the work it's meant to do. Your digestive system can digest the food, mm-hmm. and then once it has finished, it will rest and start the work of repairing which is what the regeneration and repair. So I started off with the 16, eight and she, she, she constantly, you know, um, pushed us to, 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 to push, uh, she, she motivated us to push the boundaries. So from 16, um, eight, it became 18, six. And I, and to be honest, I'm not like a blind follower. So I, I wouldn't, somebody won't say do this and I'll just jump on it. So there was a lot of reading. And I still remember then we used to, I, I, I'm not sure who told who about it, but we used to exchange literature. What if I see anything on the internet? You know, just talking to, I don't even think you were a, a believer in the first, I'm not sure whether I was Kito or I, you were not a believer. Like there was a lot of like, but this is what it is. And I'll send her, I'll send you articles. That, this thing seems to work. Like that idea, I, that idea of just letting your body digest the food fully mm-hmm. and then, rest mm-hmm. and like it's not because so 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 the reason why i tend to gain weight and i realized that because i remember maybe like 20 when i was at my biggest is i used to sit in my friend's office and she had food she didn't have food she had snacks she had oreos chin chin biscuits mm-hmm. oh somebody doesn't change you you take a bit you take, so my, i was constantly munching and you be like i don't eat much though. i don't eat much yeah but well, you're constantly you. grazing constantly snacking constantly snacking constantly snacking so i balloon so you know so but so with that there was now that control because i had the windows and then you know i started pushing it i think the longest fast i did was like 50 something hours and honestly i felt very good i didn't feel the first couple of days when you start of course with everything you feel sluggish and tired but after that, I felt normal. I could do it. I could go. I could go to the gym. So I wouldn't have eaten for two days, and I would still go to the gym, work out with the same intensity, mm-hmm. and not feel sluggish. So I just that's when I came to realization that you see what we eat out of habits, and I, yeah, we don't eat because we are hungry. We yep. actually that is what intermittent fasting made me realize. So I guess mm-hmm. that is why then. So. But like with everything, your body then gets used to, to these things, right? So at some point, so the 16, 18 doesn't work. You can't really be, for me, fasting for 52 hours all the time. Mm-mm, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't subscribe to that. So like I said, everything is a learning. Everything is a journey. Then it now became, okay, hmm. If the 16, I, I mean, at the end of the day, how many times a day do I really need to eat? And what am I eating? So, hence, enter OMAD. One meal. So, one meal. I did some research. I saw this OMAD one meal a day. I said, how light only once? They told us <laughs> bring the most important meal of the day. Yeah, they you have to eat five small meals a day. Your body is hey, continuously you know, filled. Continuous All this conditioning. Yeah, by the food, f- food makers, by the way. Yeah. Like a, Lunch like a king, mm-hmm. uh, breakfast like breakfast a king. of kings, <laughs> breakfast Lunch of champions, like a prince, and mm-hmm. dinner is like a proper. Beyond this, it I'm like, okay, but these people are now saying one meal a day. 
And you know, and what me they do? All right, I'll try. I'm I'm, okay. I'm happy to try anything, right? And in terms of fasting, work. So let's see what meal a day. Will I be hungry? Will I be climbing the wall? Day one, hmm, chew gum, you'll be okay. By the third or fourth, I mean, to be honest, it's not easy because, especially if you are in a habit. So it's easy. It was easier for me because I had been doing intermittent fasting, right? So my body, I was used to it, right? So sometimes when I fall off the wagon, and I I will talk about that as well. When I fall off the wagon, right? Coming back is not easy. Getting back to the be able to, even if it's 16, 8, it's not easy as well. You know, but I was able, I don't know, I was truly just able to integrate. And I remember then, and then we now had this conversation about doing it. And we set up a meal plan just to encourage ourselves. I think that is the support. So the su support is also very good, I must say. It's also very important, I must say that, because... Um, it can be a lonely journey. You and you, um, if you don't have somebody else to talk to, because you will always have questions. It's good to say, "Oh, I felt this way." Or, what are you eating? Sometimes you get stuck with a menu. I remember when I said Omar, it was more. It was still tailored towards the keto meals, mm -hmm. and when we first started, and then I can't remember. I'm not even sure who said. Somebody said to me, "Oh, well." After I eat, if she's going to eat only once a day, she's going to have a three three course meal. <laughs> I think it was she's going to have, she's going to have her dinner and she's going to have dessert. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, but it won't work. It won't work. And I, you need to just, you know, it has to be keto. And it works. It works for the person mm -hmm. because your window is one meal a day. So you you eat your one meal, and no matter what it is. You may not lose weight as fast, mm -hmm. but you would you would feel better. You will feel stronger. You have clarity of mind. You have mm -hmm. focus. You know, I think that the fact that our body just we're constantly munching and grazing, and our body has to do so much work. So much work. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, because sometimes even in your even your you you are exhausted. I don't know how to explain it. You're tired. You wake up tired. You're tired all the time. Mm -hmm. But I notice the difference, and then your skin is clearer because your body has your cells have time to rejuvenate. Mm -hmm. So, so for me, I don't know. I just thought, you know what? This this works. I can eat whatever I want within reason, and mm -hmm. everything is. So at the end of the day, even with Omar, even with whatever lifestyle, you have to even eat within reason. So you have to look at your portions. Yeah. It doesn't mean you now eat, eat 50,000 calories, even though I've been exactly. known to eat maybe 5,000. But that's okay. Yeah, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, but I also think, you know, and, and another thing about, and, even, and, and I think we should also learn to forgive ourselves when we fall yeah. um, as well, because that, that is when it becomes a lifestyle. So today I may eat three times, for instance. That doesn't mean... Is the end of the world. I won't berate myself. Normally, I would, and then I'll be like, I'll fall in. I might as well just continue. I'm like, no. Tomorrow is another day. Mm -hmm. I'll have my one meal. I'll plan my one meal. I will enjoy my one meal. And I appreciate that it can be difficult for people with, with children because you have to cook and you mm -hmm. have to make sure your children eat. So, um, what, I, um, what I will say is just try and cook if 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 you're t if you're going to be tempted, then just try and eat protein because yeah, protein, something a bit healthy. yeah, mm. something a bit healthy, yeah, right, but, yeah, yeah. It's it's <laughs> very interesting because I, I remember when yeah you know I remember the first time I heard intermittent fasting I was like ah please another one of them another fat diet you know this is not going to work it doesn't make sense. You know, but like with everything that I like to do, I like to do a lot of research. So there's a lot of research, you know, my own independent research. Is there any science backing this thing up? And I was surprised. Like sometimes when you're not looking for information, you're like, oh, it's not there. But the moment you Google it, you're like, oh, my God, you mean the whole world knows about this intermittent fasting thing? And I've been here killing myself, eating grass every single day. And so it was just very good for me to see. And I'm gangster because I'm gangster. I'm the queen of diets. So I remember when, you know, I'd done the intermittent fasting for a few months and I lost it. I was like, wow, wow, this is good. Okay. And I'm not even hungry. Okay. All right. All right. I got this. And you said, let's do OMAD. I was like, OMAD, one meal a day. How? How is that even possible? But again, the gangster in me was like, you know what? Let's do it. And I think we had set like a four week uh, challenge for ourselves. 
and we did the four weeks of OMAD, one meal a day. And honestly, I was surprised. I wasn't even hungry. Yes, I would start to dream about eating like an hour or two before mealtime, but it was something to look forward to, you know? And it was like, oh, what am I going to cook tomorrow? What am I going to make tomorrow? So it's not just senseless eating. It's not like, oh, let me just eat whatever is available. It's like, okay, let me even plan what it is I'm going to, to eat. And I think that that's very key for people who want to take up any kind of weight loss lifestyle. Even if you wanted to just do keto or whatever it is, you have to plan for what you're going to eat. But I really liked Omar because it stops you from constantly thinking about, oh, am I going to have a breakfast? Or am I going to have a lunch? Or am I going to have a snacks? Or am I gonna... It's like one meal. It doesn't take too long for you to plan one single meal. And so we did OMAD for the first, for four weeks, I think it was. And then kind of went back to just regular intermittent fasting. And then maybe like, um, I think my app tells me now that I'm, I'm like day 87 of OMAD. So we started OMAD again late last year, trying to get that yeah. December body going. Um, and, and it's just kind of stuck for me. Like, I can't even imagine trying to plan three meals. I, like, honestly, it's, it just takes too much energy and too much time to plan three meals. Even so even my body gets like yeah this constant eating no it's just mm. this constant great you can, i can just feel it and sometimes people will eat like maybe they'll eat pounded jam and you're like oh i need to sleep that that's your body telling you that uh-uh you you just killed me you know if you eat and you go into a food coma that is not a good thing it's not oh my god now i'm well fed no 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 that's your body telling you that um you I'm just got it wrong hard. i'm working too hard <laughs> you know so, so the other thing about OMAD is, you know, like not everybody can go into one meal a day because trust me, it, is, it, is, it means you fasting for 23 hours and just having yeah. that one hour eating window is very yeah. difficult. The recommendation is you start with a 16 hour fast. So start fasting for 16 hours. Start your fasting at night so that the hours you're sleeping counts towards your, your, your fasting and then have an eight hour window to eat. It does not now mean eat straight for eight hours. That's just defeating the purpose as well. It is plan your meals, have one or two meals. You know, some people have one big meal and then have a smaller meal, you know, or some people just have two meals. Um, that's fine. Start from the 16-hour fast, eat for eight hours. And then once you feel like your body is now used to this and you're not losing more weight, then you can increase to maybe 18, 6, 24. And then if you really want to be gangster, you can come and join us. We have a WhatsApp group for the OMAD people, the people who really want to maintain this lifestyle. Yeah, it's just a way of life. It takes yeah. away all the, all the, do I have to eat this? Bulletproof coffee, uh, how much carbs? You just eat whatever it is you want to eat. Just eat whatever you want to eat yeah. in a one what hour you, window. Yeah. Yeah, just I enjoy. Know. Yeah. I remember, so in December, right? Um, oh, you, you hey, hang on. Bookie is saying that, is there a preference between one time you eat lunch or dinner? There's no, so I started off eating dinner because I thought, oh my God, I can't get home from work and now just be looking at myself. I need to eat dinner. So I did dinner for a very long time, but now I do lunch. So I eat between 12 and 1 and I find that it works for me. Like I'm not hungry the rest of the day. And in the morning, I'm like, okay, so what am I going to have for lunch today? You know, I'm I actually looking for something. Somebody, somebody did breakfast and I thought gangster. Okay, I don't know about breakfast, man. <laughs> I'm not a yeah. breakfast person. So breakfast... Um, <laughs> I do, I do, um, around four o'clock, right? Would you call that lunch mm -hmm. or dinner? So I yeah. try to eat like by four, between four and six anyways. Like, so that means, so I have an hour to eat, but it, it falls in time between four, okay, four and six. six. Okay. Someone is asking, Boogie is asking, does it mean excluding tea and black coffee? Yes. You can have as much tea and black coffee as you want. Um, my mom, and I don't know if she's on, she likes to put cream and stevia in her tea or coffee. I'm like, oh, but she's still eating one meal a day. I'm like, oh, that's not really intermittent fasting, but okay. You know, start from wherever you are. You know, over time, you will start to build. It's an acquired taste to be able to drink black tea or black coffee. I couldn't drink black tea or black coffee for a long time, but now I don't even want to see milk in my coffee. It's like pure black. I'm so telling it, you, it, I remember when I started green tea, Joe. I thought Ugh, this is green tea. Yeah, this it was painful. <laughs> I can only drink green tea. I can't even drink black tea. Yeah. So start with, from wherever you are and just go from there. So the next question I'm going to ask is exercise, you know, because OMAD or intermittent fasting with or without exercise, it works. So where does um, exercising come into play? So for, like you said, OMAD, um, if without exercising, it, it works. But I find, so what I, so exercising was, because it was something we did, 
can boot camp. You know, it was it was just something you everybody told you when you wanted to lose weight or be fit. It's something it's something um, you do. Um, but so that's so I, I think I I did that. Um, I went through that motion for a long time because it was just something you did, right? However, in 20, 2019, right? So I, like I said, so 2018, 2019, I was a bit of a dark phase. And I said to go back. So that's when I put on a lot of weight and I, and I said to go back to the gym. And the mental clarity that that gave me. So I go to the gym not to, not so much to lose weight, but because I like the, I like the place I'm at when I'm done. I like mm -hmm. the mental. So while I'm working out, yeah, I'm thinking, who sends me this for? <laughs> but when I have to get up in the morning or, or go in the evening, I'm like, ah, who sends me? But yeah. I like the mental clarity it, 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 it gives me. I like the mm -hmm. fact that it, it, but it also helps me burn in addition. But for me, it's a mental thing. And I, and, and, and I hear that from a lot of people. It's not so much, um, yeah, I like to have a sculptured body at some point, but, or, yeah, that, that is a dream. You come through, you not. <laughs> a dream. But I don't know, but, but I work out more for my mental state than for my physical state. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. And, you, you know, like, People think, oh, can I just lose weight by going to the gym? Okay, if you're, if you're doing two, three hours every single day, sure, you might be able to do it. But if you're going to the gym three times a week and doing 15 to 30 minutes, you're, you're just kidding yourself. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's 80% 80 80 of weight loss is really your diet. So if you can fix your diet, you know, and we're just offering you one option, one solution using intermittent fasting or OMAD, then you can spend less time or fewer hours in the gym. And not everybody enjoys I, – I like going to the gym. I don't know that to go to the gym is still a struggle. Like, I wake up, I'm like, oh, my God, again today? Why? Um, but like you said, once I get in there and I have my adrenaline going, I'm kind of okay, and I feel better afterwards. You know, gym is more for that firming up the body as you're losing the weight. Gym alone, 30 minutes, three times a week – and then you go home and you now reward yourself with that big jello fries or that pounded jam or pasta or whatever it is and have a large pizza and be like, but I went to the gym. You're just kidding yourself. It's not going to work. At the end yeah. of the day, it's simple, Matt. Calories in, calories out. Calories it's simple. It's, it's as simple as that. You know, so gym is good. It really helps. Like if you can do, if you can work out as well as do intermittent fasting or OMAD, you would see even more results. Like I did that in December, in that November, December that we did last year, because I, I really, I'd gained a lot of weight because I was watching news on COVID and people dying. I was just, you know, just munching. I'm like, what's going on in the news? And I'm just watching the numbers. Oh my God, the world is going to end. There's no jello fries in heaven. I have to eat everything right now. And I gained all this weight and I really wanted to lose the weight really quickly. So I did strict, all my strict, strict gym every day. And I'm talking every day, seven days a week. And I was able to lose that 20 pounds that I had gained within a short period of time. But since then, I've not really had to go to the, to the gym. Well, the gyms are closed here right? anyway. But just doing the OMAD, I've been able to maintain my weight. So I'm kind of just back to where I was before, between 88 kg and 90 kg. Um, but that's not it for me. I still have plans to lose more weight. But it's still going to be an OMAD lifestyle, which is one meal a day or some version of uh, intermittent fasting, probably 20 hours fasting and four hours of eating. So, yeah, so that's yeah. my game plan. <laughs> Yeah, and and same here because it's not every so, so it's a it's a lifestyle and you find it's not every day you succeed right and for me like I keep saying that the, because you fail today doesn't mean you should then I don't I don't like that mindset of I'm going to start Monday I'm going to start I used to be like that okay today is Tuesday I'm falling on this Tuesday I'm going I to well fall the whole week. <laughs> Or we'll Monday, I'll start. Or first of January, I'll start. Or first of March, I'll start. Or is it, you know? No, once. Oh, I have a friend who's planning to start next Monday. I was like, why not start now? She said, I'll start on Monday. Let's no, start no, on no. first so of February. Yes, because so Just what happens? Start, what yeah. I find happens is that when you keep, when you put it on a pedestal, right? When something comes and say for one, one maybe somebody annoyed you and you just thought, you know what, I need that bar of chocolate, I beg. And you have it and then you think, ah, I've, I've fallen. Because you've, mm -hmm. you've ascribed so much importance to that date, right? When something, when, when you're, when you, so something destabilizes you, then you fall off. 
so I keep telling people, I tell my friends all the time, like, if you, if, okay, so today yes, you, you could not do 20, um, 16 hours. No problem. Eat your food. Tomorrow is another day. Try and do better mm-hmm. tomorrow. Reduce mm-hmm. your portion. And even I, so I was even going to say for exercise, right? So I'm not only about going to the gym. I mean, for people that are in the West, you probably can't go out walking. But if you can walk, walking helps as well. Low impact. You don't have to go to the gym. Just uh, move your body. Yeah. Even with, uh, or dance. Some people just dance at home. They dance. They exactly. Do. Dance. Just yeah. find some people something. go swimming. Yeah. Thank you. Just some move the body. Some, just move just it. Move. That's basically burn more more calories. Just move the body. Be 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 active. Really. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, like I said, for me, it's it's um, clarity. Um, um, it's, it's clarity. But the truth is, you can't. Like you said, you cannot out gym a bad diet. You can. Oh, yeah. you, you can go to the gym, you can go to the gym four or five times for four hours, seven hours, seven days <laughs> a week. And if you're still eating rubbish, worst case, you will not put on more weight. Mm-hmm. Worst case, that's the, as in, yeah, or rather, best case, you won't put on more weight. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do anything. So, so yeah, so um, one thing that is important is if you fall, just dust yourself up. Okay, today, ah, I feel today. Tomorrow is another mm-hmm. day. And continue before you know it it will just become it will become very normal to you yeah. like it's second nature to me now mm-hmm. honestly so i go out i go out walking so during covid because of course everyone was closed so i go out walking i started off working walking on the road like three four times a week i go out every day now mm-hmm. like the days i don't go out i know how i feel and i think mm-hmm. that's because the weather really good here so it just becomes it so i think what i'm just trying to say is the up the more you do it the more it once becomes a habit then you are set mm-hmm. okay. so just, um yeah don't okay all right so b- before we we get to you know how people can really just get started like get started now not get started next week or wait for the first of february there's one thing i keep hearing a lot and it's a good excuse for a lot of people but i'm big boned what, what what do you say to that? Are there people that are really really big boned who cannot lose weight? I don't think so because mm-hmm. when you see, I don't. I've not seen any big bone skeleton skeleton before. Exactly. Exactly. That's the only thing that comes. I haven't seen any. I don't. There's no no no. It's not about bones. No. Yeah. Because what you say about our big bones are very dainty ankles. No. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we come up with a lot of excuses why we can't. And yeah, there are some medical um, reasons why you might not be able to lose weight. I, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, and high cholesterol. It's like So many things just kind of just made me say, you know what, that's it. Like th- this can't go on. Uh, and so I had to really just make a lifestyle change for good because I'm like, I don't want to be on meds for the rest of my life. I'm still young-ish, you know. So let's stop giving ourselves excuses on oh, big bone or oh, oh, BMI is not for our type well, of people. people or, no, yeah. That's all those things are not true. You know, those are just the lies that we have told ourselves to hide, hide behind whatever size we are. And don't get us wrong. You can be happy in whatever size you are. It's up to you. You know, if, if, if you, if you're comfortable in your size, then that's fine because losing weight is not going to bring you happiness. Just decide within yourself, how do I want to look? Am I okay with the way I look? Do I feel confident in my skin? If you do, then, you know, that's fine. But if you feel like, you know, I can improve the way I look, or I can improve, improve the way I feel or my energy levels, then now is the time to do something about it. And you don't have to wait. Don't wait for another New Year resolution or another month. You can get started with intermittent fasting, which is very easy. Think about it. You don't have to change your diet. You can get started today. So they should like, tell them where and how. How can they get started? Um, I would so one thing you sorry, I just wanted to even point out that so so yeah, like Joan is so she she's spot on. It's not about even losing weight because you might be happy with your size, but what what it does, like I said, it's it, it's clarity, like it gives you energy, clarity of mind. So it's not so your goal may not even just be to lose weight, but it's just to have energy, your skin will be popping. I mean, see Joe's skin now. No, me, I'm reacting. Forget the makeup, but so. no, my skin is still popping. Thank you very but, much. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's so many added. Sorry? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I said my skin, my skin. 
but um but yeah but there's so many other mm -hmm. added advantages outside of even weight loss so weight loss is just one thing what you have your gut is healthy so that means when you eat food you don't your stomach doesn't go from flat at 9 a.m to pot at 2 p.m because you've had a meal you know your fauna and flora they are balanced um you you have clarity you can think you don't you you wake up with a clear mind when you are energized you sleep it helps you sleep properly mm -hmm. um to be honest so in starting i would i would always advise people you know what just dip your toes in bit by bit i'm not i'm not gangster like june me, I would just start with, they say 16, I started with 16, um, 8, and that's what I would advise everybody to do, 16, 8. I think what is very important is plan your meals and try and eat what you enjoy. So this, I think why people struggle is, oh, they said, ah, we can only eat X, Y, Z, and you don't like X, Y, Z, right? So now okay. I have to incorporate more veggies into my, my diet, and I'm thinking, how? So mm -hmm. that would be a struggle for me. Because I, I'm not really, I mean, I, eat, I like salads, but I'm not in that headspace. So uh -huh. my point to this, just eat what you enjoy, especially when you start now. It's, easy, it's, it's easier for me to incorporate veggies and, and eat more salads now because I know I have to. So what I'm going to do is make the salad or, or the stir fry and have it with something I like. So that makes it easy or easier. Mm -hmm. So always eat what you enjoy and portion control, no matter what. Because you're eating within, with a, within an eight hour window doesn't mean you should have conflicts, then uh, you should have chimps, <laughs> uh, you should have. <laughs> and have some pound and yam, I have some bread, I did, you know, some I bread, add some pizza to that bread. and some ice cream. Yes, yeah. they say every hour. No. So portion control in all this. It's, it's, it's key. Look, at the end of the day, right, it will even, to be honest, right, if you manage your portions, you will, you will, it, it, it helps, right? Even if you are not fasting, even if you're not doing anything, you, if you manage your portions, you can lose weight or, and you can, it's not even so much lose weight, right? I don't even want us to be hampering on this lose weight. It's just having the energy to live life do you understand you can experience life you're not in a constant state of oh i'm tired i'm fatigued uh, you know you're just in a constant state of the of you, you, your energy levels are steady so it's not up now down you know sometimes yes and that's what i also wanted to say so be, be prior to even just starting you know um omad and and um and, and intermittent fasting, you notice that. So you're at nine o'clock, you're perky. Around one o'clock, your energy level starts to you start to just feel a bit sluggish, a bit slow. When I'm fasting, mm -hmm. I don't feel that way. It's constant. The how I feel at nine is how I feel at seven or eight. It's just my body is very It's just it, it's just constant, right? <clears throat> so. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that is so that is a plus. So those are the things um, one should focus on. The weight loss, yes, very good. But it's a lifestyle. You have to feel body and soul must feel uh, must, mm -hmm. must must feel good. So just start baby steps. If you can't, I mean, some people have children; they have to cook. If you find that you have to cook, then try and schedule your meals for when you, your family is when you are having family dinners, if all of you eat together, or, you know, just try and work out, make it work for you. Don't walk around it. I don't know how to explain it. Make it work mm. for you because that is the only way it can be, um, you can sustain it. So I would advise, I would say start 16, eight, um, try and have more proteins than carbohydrates, especially if you're lo looking to lose weight, a lot of veggies yeah. as well um portion control and and drink a lot of water you can drink green tea you can drink soda water you can drink um coffee black coffee decaf um, you can um so even your water you don't have to drink if, so a lot of so a lot of people also struggle with drinking water so you can you can flavor your water as well you can put um, watermelon you can put lime oranges just so that you, a lot of people don't like that water. Although water is supposed to be tasteless, yeah, but 
water taste. It can flavor, <laughs> it can flavor your water. Yeah. But it's a lot of water. That also helps. To be honest, it also helps cleanse your 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 system, and then you you don't even eat eat as much or fuller, um, quicker. So yeah, so basically that's how I, I think if I okay. as that's how I approached it, anyways. Okay, good, awesome. So we've gotten a lot of tips, um, a lot of advice. Again, we are not professional dietitians or doctors, um, so as with every. Um, you know, weight loss program or wellness program that you embark on, make sure that you do speak to your your doctor. Some people have some underlying health issues that may not allow them to um, adopt this lifestyle. So make sure that you do reach out to whatever healthcare professional you have to get some, uh, some further advice and do some reading on your own. You know, learn more about this lifestyle and look at yourself individually. How does this work for me? You know, is this something that I can fit into the way I like to live my life? But, you know, weight loss or, be, or health, health, health uh, wellness shouldn't be a painful journey is the message. It shouldn't be something that you're constantly fighting. Oh, do I have to do oh, another again? Oh, today again. Oh, my God. Another salad, another this. It should be something that you can maintain, something that is sustainable for you long term. That's the only way you can start to really, really rip the real benefits of this. So before we end, you know, we've been talking a lot about fitness and wellness and food and IF and OMAD. So for you, Desho, personally, in your life, because you're into so many other things minus this health, uh, health and wellness journey, what else can the world expect from you in 2021? So in 2021, I'm looking to share more of my learnings, my journey, talk about my experience, more things that have worked for me. Um, I'm looking to... You know, start some. I, I, so I, like I said, I'm in financial services and I find a lot of people struggle with just investments and knowing what to do, how to save their money. So I'm going to start like a closed group or I'm going to try, I'm working on building a community where we can share ideas about investments and investing um, as well. I mean, our target audience is. I mean, we are focused on, on, we are biased towards women because I'm a woman, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, but so those so are things. But it's really just sharing my knowledge, my learning, my journey um, in 2021 because there, there are a lot of young people and there are a lot of people that are looking for this knowledge and um, it's not there, so they tend to just fall for all these pyramid get rich quick. Mm, uh -huh. So, so basically, yeah, that's that's what I want to focus on in twenty twenty one. Awesome, nice, sounds yeah. exciting. And, uh, yeah, I'm living my best life, of course. Oh yes, absolutely. So I know you read my book, and you did leave me yeah. a voice message on what you thought. So, what advice do you have for people who still haven't read my book? I think. Everybody should get this book. Honestly, I rise because it is real. It is raw. It is authentic. It it in um, reading about your story because the book is really about your story. It um, there's so many lessons. Like I like the uh, there's so I mean I resonated with nearly all the chapters. To be honest, I have it all written down, but. You know what? It it, 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 it it makes you realize that if you don't do what you want to do in this life, what's the point? Right? I was talking to somebody, what's, yeah, what's the point? And what I like the best about your story, June, is you brave life afraid. Like, you have a chapter on that. Do you get that? That is what i like you know there's one saying I've, i heard in the last couple of months it's um i do i can do hard things and mm -hmm. and that what comes to mind when you know that that i took away from the book and and that i that i want to walk on in 2021 you are so brave and i think anybody if you're looking for that motivation i rise is that book john's story is 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 that is i'm telling you if you think i can't do this just read this book i know that if somebody did it you can do it as well because there's very there are very few things joan puts her mind to 
um, and I've known Joan for a very long time. So I'm not even, this is not even psych or anything, but they're very, there are very few things Joan says she wants to do that she doesn't do or that she doesn't excel at. And it's all in the book, right? And, and I like the book because it's not a, you have to do this, do this you must do that it's more it's a story it's a journey she takes you on her journey so you can apply you can see yourself i, I saw myself in many of those stories or many of those experiences you were sharing i i, I really i mean it's not just sex but it is a really amazing <laughs> book no seriously it is a really amazing book and it's an easy Thank read you. it's not too long and it's an easy read and it just because what happens is in this life, you don't have to experience things yourself. You can learn from people's journey. And Absolutely. That, and um, that this is one journey or one story you will definitely learn from. So, yeah, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Get the book. It's available on Amazon and many bookstores in Nigeria if you're in Nigeria. But, you know, just like she said, it's all about how you can arise in every single area of your life. My life has not been perfect. Far from it. Um, but it's just having that bravery to just keep doing, keep moving ahead. You know, even when you fall down or you make mistakes, just arise. It's fine. You know, you learn from everything that you experience, everything you go through, every heartbreak, every bad decision, every failure. It's just the learning process. You know, so that's what these open conversations are about as well. And we're going to keep having it every week. And we're going to be touching on different subjects or different topics that have to do with life. Um, next week, guest is going to be one of my dear friends here in Canada and you know I met her shortly after I came to Canada and she's been able to pivot so much you know in, in the midst of all the adversity she was going through in life and I just want I'm just looking forward to her really sharing that story which also aligns with what my book talks about how do you keep moving ahead when the whole world seems to be crumbling um, around you so thank you very much this show um Thank you, Thank you for well, being here. It was a lot of fun. And I hope that most of you will get on this intermittent fasting lifestyle. It's really helped my life. It's helped so many people I know, so many of my friends. If you do want to be part of our WhatsApp group, you can send me a private message and I will add you to the WhatsApp group to help you get started and giving you the support that you need to keep message. going. Sorry? Or they can I'll send a private or you can send a show a private message as well and we'll add you to our WhatsApp group. Thank you very much for joining us on this week's Arise Conversations, and we will see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Okay, guys. Bye.